he calls it he calls it the novel. Uh, the novel emerged from the earlier um, kind of categorization called Gondwana, but we'll get to that, which we, which he calls a forest of stories. And we'll come back to that because it's important. Yep. Um, but essentially, you have a beginning to end full explanation of the universe emerging about 40,000 years ago. And this is based on the fact that if you look at... 40,000. Uh, yeah. Uh, and if you that look predates at, the Ice Age. Okay. Mm. It does. And that's where the flood thing gets interesting because I... Uh, I'll come back to that as a yep. matter of fact. Yep. I don't... I think... In the flood part, I th it, it may well be there, but I think the because of the uneven distribution of flood motifs around the world, I think there's a, a very good case, dare I say open and shut, that a lot of those flood motif motifs are a memory of the end of the Ice Age. But we'll come back to that. Yep. So when you look at where the last time all the cultures that ha express these motifs, these this sort of novel of, of mythology, beginning, middle, and end, where well, the last time they were all in the one place was about 40,000 years ago in on that journey out of Africa, right? Because we Is of, this based on genetics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the out of Africa data, um, which, by the way... Okay, so you support the out of Africa hypothesis. Okay. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Um, mm. I actually spoke to some of the geneticists in Oxford who do the work, and I had all the alternate Christian, all alternate history questions for them. Uh, it doesn't tell us, because the, the failing with people's understanding of the uh, out of Africa research is that they think it's the same as the mitochondrial Eve research or the origins of mankind in Africa research. Both of those things are not necessarily correct, put it that way. Mm. Uh, but what you have, it's actually a very simple process. It's just quite expensive to, to kind of do mtDNA tests of people around the world and, and kind of guess because it's highly mutative, it's it's an underreported guess of seventy thousand years. But the a group of people left Africa between seventy and eighty five thousand years ago, kind of turned right and jogged along the coast of India down into Southeast Asia and got and basically got to Australia within a few thousand years. Um, how, how long back do they say this happened then? Well, that's the trouble because because uh, mitochondrial DNA is it, it's very good as a marker for this reason, but it's so mutative, like mm. that you have to actually shrink the generations. Because so, I asked them this. Because here's the thing, mitochondrial Eve, we have uh, an African woman of about seventy five thousand years ago, right? Um, it's not mitochondrial Adam genetic Adam, so the the last kind of universal father of people who lived outside of Africa is in a different part, so it's sort of southwest of where we think mitochondrial Eve was, and is uh, 105,000 years ago last time I looked. So I asked, like, why is mm. there a 35,000 year gap between the last kind of universal father, as far as we can tell, and universal mother? And I, I was in Oxford asking these guys this for research for the book, and I said, well, um, it costs about a hundred at the time. It costs about a hundred dollars per sample to do kind of like paternal lineage, and it costs a dollar fifty per sample to do mitochondrial lineage. So we have so much more for that. So trivia. Um, we have so much more tracking mothers and grandmothers back, but hmm. that DNA is more mutative. So what they have to do is underreport each generation. So when the scientists are talking about it they say we left 70,000 years ago they mean that that is the latest possible time we've left but there's a 30,000 year window in that mm. so because they have to shrink the generations to kind of mathematically guess at the mutation rate it's between 70 and 100,000 that we left uh, africa people who don't live in africa are uh, descended from this expedition sometime between 70 and 100,000 years ago my next questions are as followed i'm like what if would we be able to find people who had left earlier and died? And they said, no, hmm. obviously not, because we wouldn't have any. We, it'd be like looking for a, hay, a needle in a haystack to try and find those motifs if you didn't have any of the data from a campfire site somewhere or, or, or all that kind of thing. So I had all the questions that – and this is kind of one of those points about, well, let's get the science right before we do the alternative explanation. Uh, so I had all those questions. Yeah, important. Yeah, because there are – and I know them, like particularly in Australia – there are sites – in Australia, that are not just a little bit older, like tens of thousands of years, 150. Like we have off the coast of Cairns, which is in uh, Queensland, we have a, a change in the chemical composition of pollen found in the seafloor, which indicates artificial burning. It's 150,000 years old. So they're completely fine with this. They're like It's not the scientists doing the research. It's when you get to quote unquote science journalism, which is yeah. essentially just idiots republishing press releases mm. that we get 
errors in the story because I, I brought all this stuff up and they're like, yeah, yeah. Like, what do you want me to tell you? Like, these data show that the people who are alive outside of Africa are descended from this expedition. So the data are good, and it tells us only that. It doesn't tell us how humans were made. It doesn't tell us where humans were made. It doesn't tell us if that happened only once. It doesn't tell us any of that stuff. It just tells us how people moved around the planet, whether it was populated by others or not, <laughs> over that particular journey. So, so to see if I get this straight then, so it's not uh, an origin, exp- it's not a genesis no. explanation, but no. it says that those who are alive today at one point can be tracked back, reduced to having wandered out of Africa at one yes. point. Maybe several points, maybe many strains died out, but that's all they can say. Yes, it, it is just... And that's 105,000 years ago. Between 70 and 105,000 years ago, a small group of people mm. left Africa, turned right, jogged along the coast, got to Southeast Asia, island Southeast Asia, which was, of course, a giant and now sunken continent, which is kind of the point yeah. of the book yeah. um, at the time. And it was from there that we that we can fold in the linguistic data and start to see that that was the first instance of technological complexity, uh, uh, increase in technological complexity that we can measure with linguistics on that journey outside of Africa. And it lines up with the emergence in Dr. Witzel's research of the Laurasian Laurasian. novel. Now, he puts it somewhere in India, but he's an Indologist. Of course, he's going to put it in India, right? Uh, He was probably unfamiliar with the Berkeley research that shows that. And this is the kind of stacking of it that gives you... So what what the Laurasian mythology might be, let's put it in antediluvian alternate history terms. What the emergence of the Laurasian mythology may broadly indicate is, in fact, shall we say, the beginnings of quote unquote Atlantean civilization, mm. not its end. Okay, but before we, we go on with the uh, Laurasian, Pangean, and Gondwana, which is very central, and we go and explore, I, I, I still want to take this, explore this detour a little more because it's important. Because did you ask them what about the Neanderthals? And and before you answer, oh, uh, because yeah. it's so important, because today we know that people living in Africa are the only people south of Sahara who, who doesn't have the uh, DNA of the uh, Neanderthals. And I want to say one more thing. When you True. point to the racial and I also say cultural bias that is so permeating this field, there is a, an even worse case, and that is precisely the Neanderthals, because they have to, somehow they have to, latch on to the notion that yeah. they are, are a different species because they started out, you know, depicting them as sub monkeys. Yeah. And then evidence has forced and forced and forced. Oh, they had advanced thinking, they had burial, they had a religion, they had music, they had matriarchy, etc. Et I think we got I think we got Western magic from them. So we have Neanderthal caves in Europe that are basically magic circles. Right. So I, I if you look at the fact like I don't even And that predates hundred thousand years, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well see this is this is an excellent question, Al, because we have two sort of like speciation challenges when it comes to other hominins. Right. Because one, we keep finding them. So if you're kind of looking at before the end of the Ice Age, it's like some sort of Lord of the Rings world. We have hobbits. We have all these different kind of like broadly. Giants. Yeah. Um, And as I'm sure you're aware, because if you're asking the Neanderthal question, there are some alternate researchers and even some just rogue mainstream uh, mainstream ones who are like, look, I don't think the Neanderthal and, and, and us are different species. How can they be as long as we, we know we found children that are mixes? We know that. That's, so this is a speciation challenge. This is, yep. this is actually one of those imperial categorization challenges yep. that it, it impacts all biology. Exactly. So you're absolutely correct on that. Now, did I ask them about it? I did, but I asked a very specific question mm-hmm. because at the, I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with Oxford geneticists about like, <laughs> I think that the end, which I do, <laughs> no, no. but like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think you, I, I think this is an over described morphological difference i don't think it's a different species Mm. um same thing i I expect we'll find with the denisovans what i did ask them and what i did find out because here's the other kind of 
challenge. We we call the Denisovans Denisovans because they were found, a finger bone was found in a cave in effectively Siberia. And Siberia is again one of those places where you kind of think cavemen live. The trouble is, it's just a finger bone. That's the piece of evidence. The highest level of hominin genetic admixture, with, to put it another way, Humans that have the highest percentage of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA is found in island Southeast Asia and Oceania. Now, if you have the highest level of genetic admixture, what it means is that you have the longest period of time in which Denisovans and Neanderthal and us banged and had children. Mm -hmm. And that is where we have a sunken continent and a 40,000-year-old uh, development in cultural complexity. And although he thinks it's in India, but it's his guess, we have the, the emergence of Laurasian mythology. But I think, and also let's not forget, in this corner of the world, defying all explanation is, of course, Homo floresiensis or the Hobbit. Mm. So it's not just that we were banging ones that looked kind of like us, <laughs> Um, which is the Denisovans and Neanderthals, there are these weird hobbit ones. And here we also have, of course, um, Gunung Padang and, and carved mountains that look like proto-pyramids. So it's, what the hell? Yeah, but it's ironic that Blavatsky, who has been so popoed and certainly not uh, accepted in science, she was onto this probably because of she did actually have she had access to documents. We, that's another story. Interesting. Yeah, she did, and we can take that after the show. Because my explanation. Yeah, my explanation for that would have been much like it is for things that I think have been over-described in alternate history, like the Piri Reyes map. Um, I, what if it was remote viewing? Like, we have the evidence for that. What well, if okay, she... maybe, maybe it's a case of both. Maybe she had some yeah. ad, real documents and she got higher inspiration. But the point is, she said all this in her last edition of The Secret Doctrine. If you read it, it's so uh, redemption and fun to read because although no matter what we think of her paradigm and her project she really went into battle with the darwinists of her time and she raised many good points and i've been on to the neanderthal thing ever since i read that at the age of 16 yeah, nice. and i've just <laughs> seen science confirm and confirm and confirm her claim which was that it was just uh i think she argued actually that they had uh, what we called a english disease i'm not sure what <laughs> that translates to you probably don't call it that <laughs> funnily enough Being english uh, it's weird to say that so in in new zealand and my old boss used to call pedophilia the English disease. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was that bad. But no, uh, no matter, the, she argued it was a part of the human species. And back then it would be ridiculous because yeah. back then they were supposed to be these low broad brutes, right? Yeah. But now... But we thought that about Africans. We thought that about Australian Aborigines in the 19th century. So yeah, that too. Uh, She's completely correct. Uh, well, not completely correct. But I have a couple of beefs. I didn't plan to introduce them yet. But the first one is, the first nitpicking here, where we may disagree, is precisely the Neanderthal enigma. Because I don't think you actually take that on. And that's a criticism. No, I don't. I, I don't. And yeah. <laughs> to tell one part of this story, you have to tell the entire history of the world and, and pull out a bit. <laughs> yeah. Because it is, it's not, obviously, it's not a history of the world. But I have to go back. 150,000 years and a lot has happened in the last 150,000 years so criticism accepted there's not I, I you kind of had to pick your battles and uh no no but you it's not just that it's it's void because i mean you can't say everything i agree but it directly inter fares with one of your main premises of the book which is the southeastern origin thing but we'll get to that but you see what i mean it's it's kind of data that... i don't think it does i don't think okay. it does because okay. we also have the the linguistic evidence in gunung padang so i don't think it directly it, it the humans that left africa weren't traveling through an empty landscape where we the denisovans and neanderthals and whoever else we end up finding uh, were out there so I don't think it does at all, um, okay. and it's because I have stacks of evidence. What uh, the criticism that I will accept is, and I couldn't put it anywhere, is and and some other kind of, you know previous alternate historians have looked into quote unquote Neanderthal civilization. I hate the I hate that particular C word. Mm -hmm. I like the other one. Mm -hmm. um, you mean culture? I, I, no, 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 no. I was making a rude joke. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I, yeah. Okay. Move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
yeah so but i couldn't i couldn't put that anywhere but i i don't think it uh, i think the um the emergence the first emergence outside of africa of of cultural complexity that we can find uh being island southeast asia i think the case is good there because it has dr joanna nichols sort of second expansion research and and also um the cave art that's found in java the sort yeah. of half a million year uh, old carved mollusk shell mollusk shells in the same area homo erectus and and again the hobbits and and all this kind of stuff suggest and the that, celtic it seems that they are the origin to the celtic ethnicity the Neanderthals. Oh, who knows who it, like it, it it yeah it's actually not my area in that sense they completely look like celts yeah it could be yeah it, but it's valid it's absolutely it, it's valid i couldn't put it's already one hundred and ten thousand words yeah. uh i couldn't put my speculation of what Neanderthal, quote unquote, civilization and where it comes from is. But I'm as I'm very interested in, interested in that research at the London Occult Conference, whatever that was, 2016. Mm. Um, I gave a presentation that relied very heavily on those sort of magic circle caves and stuff that we found with Neanderthal. So I'm I'm very sympathetic to it. But I think it's racist to exclude that data point, which is the Neanderthals. I think yeah, it's uh, no, not from you though, but you know, in mainstream uh, anthropology, disregarding and and keeping them as a different species for so long trying to force yeah you're probably right um the it'll be one of those i hate using the word paradigm change but uh, eventually we will come to a point where sort of officially the it'll start with the neanderthal and us divide will be erased and eventually we will come to that point and all of a sudden all these different data um, will change will change the story. It still doesn't impact the fact that you you may I mean we all have Neanderthal blood, but it still doesn't impact the fact that you can um, you can genetically trace your um, part of your lineage back to these people who moved around the world uh, out of Africa. So do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you say we all have Neanderthal blood. Um, apparently, people south of Sahara doesn't. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, but that that's an indication that we who left Africa, genetically admixed, slashed, banged with right. the D- Denisovans and Neanderthals once we left Africa. Right. That's why it's not there. And that's probably so also we, why they think that's where we originated because they don't have that admixture, and then they think that's the yes, pure. Yes, and and that is a misinterpretation of the data. Yep. And that's that's a bad one. But what what the data do show is that we mixed with. Other hominins, which is Denisovans and Neanderthals, once we left Africa, and more importantly, most of that mixture over the longest period of time happened in island Southeast Asia, well, what is now island Southeast Asia, but was, of course, Sundaland, or a continent twice the size of India, that it was a landmass that has sort of sunk at the, at the end of the Ice Age. So I don't think, mm. um, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, like, he, and I honestly don't know this because the data aren't there, maybe when our little colonist expedition out of Africa hit island Southeast Asia, they found a fairly developed, and probably did, fairly developed Neanderthal, potentially even Denisovian, Denisovan rather, um, culture. Culture, cultures, maybe like mm. I do think, like, like I said, I think we learnt magic from them. If you, if mm. you look at the that that cave, it's a magic circle in a mm. cave. <laughs> mm. So I think they taught us magic. Yeah, they had ceremonial berries. Yeah, they course. had flutes, which are pretty magical. Yeah, and interesting. They ma- had they sailed the Mediterranean. They had they they actually were a seafaring smaller seas as far as we can tell, but they had boats. Like this right. isn't you know. Yeah. yeah, and and one last thing about them before we move on to the great picture, and this is just a, a, a anecdotal observation. But if they are the origin to the gingers, basically, <laughs> which yeah. much seems to, I mean, some even think they're the origin to the Asperger phenomenon. But if they are this, then have you seen children of um, gingers when a, a ginger and an Afro black has a child? That would be genetically the most different. And, and those children look like an entirely new species. No, no, I'm sorry, not species, but um, ethnicity. I hesitate to use the word race. But, I know. And, and that makes sense because they're so different. The, the, the one without the Neanderthal gene and one that apparently is the direct ancestor of Neanderthal gene. 
So, no, I haven't seen that, but I'll, I'll tell you something Very interesting. interesting. Um, I'll tell you something about the sort of Spanish and French and then English colonists into Melanesia. Mm -hmm. So we're talking in the sort of Samoa area. Yeah. They would encounter, and it was particularly the missionaries who would encounter this, the Spanish ones. They'd, they'd hit these Pacific islands and hear these sort of beautiful brown Mel uh, Melanesians. And some of them would have red hair, red curly hair. And right. obviously, because they were missionaries, they thought, well, this must be where the lost tribe of Israel <laughs> showed up. Yeah. And it's, it's again, that kind of like dumb uh, biblical observation. But we can extract that and go, well, what were ginger kids doing? <laughs> 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 or brown kids with ginger hair, hair in, in Melanesia. But of course, as I just sort of mentioned, the highest level of hominin genetic admixture is found right there. Right. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, no, so we had.